Stockholm, Sweden plans to introduce traffic congestion charges aimed at discouraging suburban commuters from driving into the city. Beginning in August, motorists will have to pay a toll when entering or leaving the Swedish capital. The toll will range between $1.65 and $3.30 depending on time of day. It's an idea that has been discussed in Toronto and is likely city officials there will be watching the European situation closely. The decision to impose the charge in Stockholm came after a seven-month trial. Studies showed it reduced weekday traffic by an average of 20 percent and pollution by between 9 and 14 percent. The money raised from the tolls is being earmarked for improvements to Stockholm's road network. Similar systems are in place in other cities including London, Oslo and Singapore. And joining us now to talk more about this from the DeGroote School of Business at McMaster University is Nick Bottas. Hi, Nick. Hi, how are you? I can hear cities in Canada drooling over the prospect of this being successful. Could this idea, as Connie just indicated, work in the GTA? Because they're looking at it. You know what? I'm really skeptical. I just don't think this will work here. I mean, look at some experiences that we've had so far. I mean, launching the 407 was supposed to lower traffic on the 401, and it seems that there's more traffic now on the 401 than there ever was before. And I think the biggest difference between Toronto and European cities is that they have a downtown pedestrian area. I mean, you can go and walk and shop with the cafes, and we don't have that in downtown Toronto. So I just, it doesn't make sense to me. I think it's the wrong idea. Now, Nick, with the North American dependence and the lower cost of fuel compared to European uh, gas prices, I mean, they're paying huge amounts compared to us. But just the cheap gas that we're paying for here by comparison, would that scuttle such an idea perhaps if it was introduced? Uh, it could be one reason why they'll scuttle the idea, but I'm sure there's lots of other reasons. For example, imagine being a restaurant owner and, uh, you know, you just happen to be on the other side of the boundary and your competition is on the other side of the boundary and it turns out that people won't come to your restaurant. I mean, a lot of restaurant owners and storekeeper owners, I think they'll be upset. And with regards to the differences in gas, I mean, a lot of that also has to do with engine sizes. I mean, here in Canada, we have engines that are relatively large to European vehicles. I mean, they have engines that are two liters and less. So uh, I don't think the gas prices is going to cause the problem here. I mean, already Torontonians are voting. Online polls show that about 90% of them are against this idea. So I think the uh, politicians are going to have to come up with a new revenue generating option. And you have to ask yourself, what are we paying taxes for <laughs> yeah. at the end of the day? You know, more and more taxes and less and less service. You're right. Nick Blanis, DeGruz School of Business, thank you for this and we'll talk again soon. Thank you.